Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and we're back with another Chromebook. Today it is the HP Chromebook X360 14 inch. This is a two-in-one Chromebook, similar to some of the other ones that we have looked at recently that can operate in tent mode. Uh, you can also have it operate in display mode here. It's got a touch screen, of course, uh, or you can put it into tablet mode. Uh, unlike some of the other Chromebook two-in-ones we've looked at, this one does not, though, have a pen built in, but I'm sure you could use some kind of capacitive stylus with it. And we're going to be giving it a full review right now. But before we do, I want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure, this is on loan from a viewer. Uh, he works in software development, and they get a lot of different machines in to test things out. And he's offered to start sending some of these to us. Uh, it's to review because I have a very hard time getting loaner units in from HP. So I was eager to check this one out and I'll try to get some more in as time goes on. All the opinions are my own. Nobody is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this Chromebook is all about. So let's take a closer look now at the hardware. This sells for $599, at least on HP's site, but I found a few listed elsewhere for $549, uh, so under $600. It's got a 14-inch display, 1080p IPS. The viewing angles are decent on it, uh, but I found the display is not very bright, so it is noticeably dimmer than uh, perhaps a few other machines I have looked at recently, but overall the image quality is good. Uh, the screen, as you can see, though, is very shiny, so if you don't like these shiny displays, uh, this one may not work for you. Inside, it's got an i3-8130U processor. That is a dual-core Intel chip, 8th generation, so it's on par with other uh, mid- to low-end laptops that are out there powered with similar processors. Uh, but, of course, this one is running Chrome OS, so that will result in a different experience, and we'll talk about some of the neat new things happening with Chrome OS a little bit later in the review. It also has 8 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM, which is something we don't always see in Chromebooks, a lot of RAM. It also has 64 gigabytes of eMMC storage, so not a lot of storage by laptop standards, but for a Chromebook, it's actually quite a bit. And that's useful because Chromebooks are now running uh, Linux and Android applications, and that will give you a little bit more extra room to play with. So I'm very pleased with the overall uh, memory and storage on this one. Uh, weight is 3.7 pounds, and that converts to 1.68 kilograms. So it's a little on the heavier side for a 14-inch laptop these days. Uh, the hinge on this isn't bad, but as you can see here, it does tend to flop down a bit when you pick up the uh, device off the desk. It does, of course, stay put when you get it adjusted. It does have a little bit of play to it, so I think I would have liked a hinge that was a little stiffer than this one, but it does seem to uh, allow you to adjust the screen to a comfortable viewing angle. The case is all metal. It's got a very nice, sturdy feel to it. HP has been making nice stuff uh, in their mid-range laptops for a while now, and this one kind of continues that trend, so it feels very nice. Uh, the keyboard is equally nice. They make nice keyboards, and it's in the uh, Chrome OS layout here, so that was good to see. Uh, the keyboard is also backlit, so you can use it in the dark and find your keys. The trackpad is very nice and accurate. Uh, it's got a nice width to it also, and I found it to be uh, just as nice as the keyboard. So it does have a very good premium uh, fit and finish to it, and I was pleased with how it felt while typing on it. Now, HP is advertising 13 and a half hours of battery life out of this one. I think you'll probably get close to that in the real world. It's very heavy because I do think it's got a good amount of battery inside. Uh, I'm estimating through my usage of about 10 to 12 hours, depending on what you're doing with it. If you are loading up a lot of Android apps or starting to experiment with the Linux features of the Chromebook, I think that will consume more resources and therefore uh, drive the battery life down more. Uh, but if you are just using this as a Chromebook, mostly living in the Chrome browser, I think you will get uh, well beyond a workday with this device, which is nice because it does perform quite well, and we'll get to that performance in a few minutes. Now for ports, you've got a bunch of them on here, including a USB Type-C port on the left-hand side. This is used to power the laptop, but it also works as a data port and it will deliver video to an external display. So it's a full-service USB-C port. You can plug this into one of those single cable docks and get power in, video out, and access to additional ports if you want to take advantage of that. Next to it is a headphone microphone jack. 
Over here is a micro SD card slot for augmenting its onboard storage. Uh, the cards uh, go flush to the case here, so you can leave that in all the time as additional storage. Your standby switch is over here. On the other side, we have a Kensington lock, so you can lock it down on a desk if you're in a college environment or something like that. Uh, next to it is a full-size USB 3.0 port. Uh, this will also charge your phone or tablet while the laptop is off or sleeping, so you can use the power out of there. Uh, and next to it is another full-service USB-C port, so you can plug basically power into it on either side, whichever makes sense for the desk that you have it on, so that was good to see. It is not fanless. There is a fan on board because this is a standard uh, Intel i3 processor that does need some active cooling. Uh, but the fan is not very loud, and I found it's very judicious in how it executes the fan getting turned on in the first place. So generally, if you're using the Chromebook features of it, uh, you won't hear that fan all that often. I did find when I went to a few uh, high-impact web pages that it would kick the fan on briefly and then shut it down. So it looks like they're very much focused on uh, keeping that fan off as much as possible. But again, if you start doing more with Android and more with Linux and that processor is getting hit more uh, frequently, then of course you'll hear the fan more often. But overall, the fan noise is mostly non-existent but very quiet when it is active. So let's move on now and see how it performs. We'll take a look first at some web browsing. We had it connected up via Wi-Fi to an AC wireless network and you can see uh, browsing the web is pretty snappy and responsive as I would expect it to be on an i3 processor. So the overall feel is good here. Uh, we also checked out YouTube and ran a 1080p 60 frames per second video. Uh, we did see some dropped frames while playing back those videos. You probably won't notice them dropping out as they're playing, but they are dropping. Uh, so just be aware of that. It should do better than that on an i3 processor, and I suspect some of the issue might be with the Chrome browser that's integrated uh, into Chrome OS. We've seen it drop frames before on other devices. And on the browserbench.org speedometer benchmark test, we got a score of 160 on version 1.0 of that test, 91.8 on version 2.0. That is within the margin of error of another one we looked at recently, the Yoga C630 from Lenovo. Uh, so I think it's performing as we would expect it to. Uh, so overall, I think it is a competitive Chromebook with other similar devices out there. Now, one of the cool things you can do with Chromebooks now is run Android applications. The Google Play Store is pre-installed on this when you get it. And anything that you've previously purchased on your phone or tablet that's compatible with your Chromebook will uh, run on here without any additional charge. Uh, we did load up a few Android apps earlier, including Goat Simulator, which is a 3D open world exploration game. Uh, that, as you can see, ran fine on here, which I would expect it to, given we've got an Intel processor running here. So all good on that front. Another cool thing you can do with your Chromebook is run Linux applications. And what I've done is installed a few open source Office apps, including LibreOffice Calculator uh, and their word processor. And these things are loading up as native Linux applications on the Chromebook. These are not web browser windows popping up, but actual Linux windows, essentially, that will give you uh, some pretty decent applications to run on your Chromebook for free. I covered this in a few other videos I've done here on the channel that you can check out uh, down below in the video description. So it's getting to become a much more interesting and useful operating system and I found Linux to be very stable on here, and it performs quite well. Uh, just know that it will eat away at your battery a little bit more than running the uh, Chrome web browser. So if you are using these open source applications and you are running Android apps and leaving them running throughout the day, uh, that will be a greater power drain but everything seems to run really nicely on here. Now, one thing I'm really looking forward to on Chrome OS is the implementation of GPU support for Linux applications. At the time I'm recording this video, it is not yet working, but I expect it to be sometime during the course of the year. And I would see it probably happening first on some of these Intel devices. There are some uh, things happening on the developer and beta builds of Chrome OS. And when they get that implemented, I think you'll see pretty decent gaming performance out of these devices. At least it will be on par with what this same processor would do on Windows. And you can install the Steam Store, uh, their Linux version, through this 
Linux interface here on the Chromebook and you'll be able to play those games on here too once that GPU support is in place. Uh, you won't be able to run AAA titles, but I think games like Shovel Knight and a lot of the retro-inspired games should work pretty well. Uh, you should also be able to install older games like Half-Life 2 and others. So there's a lot of potential here for not only getting work done, but playing some games every once in a while. And once that GPU support is implemented, Chrome OS is going to be a very powerful operating system that will not have many limitations. And there's a lot of value to be gained out of these open source applications that are out there and available because you don't have to pay for them, uh, yet you'll get a lot of functionality. And I think it will dramatically increase the potential number of audience members for open source applications when you've got inexpensive Chromebooks here that just can install all this stuff without a lot of effort on the user's part. So that's a lot of cool things to look forward to. So overall, I think it's a very nice Chromebook for the price point. I like the fact that it's got eight gigs of RAM and a little more storage than what we've seen on other similarly priced Chromebooks. That will become more and more important as more and more consumers start running more Android applications and hopefully soon Linux applications on their devices. This one I think is very well prepared for those activities. Uh, it's not perfect. The screen brightness isn't great. The hinge is a little looser and floppier than I would like, and the speakers aren't all that great either. Uh, so I do recommend using some headphones or Bluetooth headphones or something to get uh, better audio fidelity out of there. But for the price point, it's decent. It performs nicely, and I think it will become more and more useful uh, as the year progresses and we start seeing more rapid development of the Linux portion of the Chrome OS operating system. So Chrome is more than just a uh, kid's school toy now. It's becoming a real competitor, I think, to Windows and Mac OS, and we'll keep an eye on what develops over the next couple of months. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters, the Four Guys with Quarters podcast, Tom Albrecht, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.